Hi, it's Outlaw Bookseller again. Um, it's early in the morning. It's um, Tuesday in September. It looks like the kids have finally gone back to school. What a grumpy old git. Um, today, I wanted to talk to you because it's hot. It made me think about deserts. And I thought I'd speak about one of my favorite female writers um, who is associated with North Africa. And I covered this female writer in my book, 100 Must Read Books for Men. Um, one of three female writers in there, um, not just token appearances, but female writers who I felt would appeal to men as much as they would to women. And um, I'll read a bit from that in a moment about this writer, but I'll talk about her first. The writer I want to talk about today is Isabel Eberhardt. Um, Isabel Eberhardt is the godmother of the hippies, and really she was way, way ahead of everybody else. She was a figure rather like Aleister Crowley, that she influenced the counterculture culture to come. There's a picture of her on the back of the book, and I'll try and put this in the thumbnail for this video. There she is. Um, she looks rather mannish there, she's saying, and that, that is quite important. Um, there we go, that's the Oblivion here, because you can still get this. It's published by Peter Owen, the wonderful avant-garde publisher. Um, it's got a different cover now. I've had this copy for ages. I mean, this is £4.50 is the price tag. <laughs> so it's going back a bit. Um, really great book. And that's my favourite of her three books in print. Also in print by Eberhardt. This is print on demand these days is um, this book here. Prisoner of Dunes. Another wonderful evocative title. Again, Peter Owen. Um, and on the back it says Women's Studies and Fiction. Well, we'll see about that. Um, and also still out there, and I think it's printed demand again. This is a this is a hardcover first, um, again from the wonderful Peter Owen. This is in the shadow of Islam. A beautiful book. I absolutely love these Peter Owen hardcovers. I'll do a feature just about Peter Owen at some point because I really love the work he did, um, and I knew him back in the nineties. And this is great, great stuff. Um, anybody who considers themselves a feminist, a proto-feminist, anybody interested in um, Islam, North Africa. Um, the classic sort of underground figures of the 20th century, you know, like William Burroughs, Paul Bowles, these sort of people who spent a lot of time in North Africa. She was kind of the precursor. We should read these books. So I'm going to do a little reading from 100 Must Read Books and Men by myself and Duncan Bowes. Hi, Duncan, if you're out there. Um, just to give you a flavour of Elv Eberhardt. Gosh, the print is small in this. So here goes. Let's just find the relevant points. Isabel Eberhardt was the illegitimate offspring of parents who boasted of Russian, Armenian and German ancestry. She was brought up by a former Orthodox priest father who made her wear boys clothes and perform manual labour alongside her brothers. When her father died, the inconsolable girl wailed that she wanted to die. Her father's response was to offer her a pistol so that she could commit suicide. Now that's childcare, isn't it? A full-blown nihilist, Daddy instilled in his daughter a healthy disregard for conventional ideas and respectable notions of morality. And that's at the heart of Eberhardt. In childhood, Eberhardt relocated to French North Africa. Still wearing male garb, she was accepted by the locals while scandalising European expatriates. She smoked dope, drank booze, and practised free love. Converting to Sufism, of course Sufism is a, is a form of Islam, Despite her mother's Jewish background, Eberhardt found tolerance and wisdom in this branch of Islam. But did she find peace within herself? Then I go on to talk about the Oblivion Seekers in the book. I'll just show that to you again. What a fantastic title, the Oblivion Seekers, and the titular story or vignette. Because the thing with these, it's hard to tell whether they're fiction or autobiography. Um, and that's the whole point, really. That's the beauty of them. They are just really looking at what she saw in her life. Anyway, moving on, um, the Oblivion Seekers contains intoxicating stories, essays, and other vignettes that reveal a woman who was most fulfilled when she lost herself in remoteness. Full of serene, hawk-like observations of desert life and stern meditations on the nature of freedom, her bracingly solid, arid prose is unsentimental in character, yet surprisingly robust in its tenderness. I haven't read this for ages. I mean, <laughs> wrote this back in, I think it was 2007, 2008. I, haven't, I think I've read it since. Um, and I go on to say that she was hailed as the godmother of the counterculture, comparable in her best moments to the great 20th century modernist writers. 
Eberhardt was a fascinating pioneer of both alternative living and impressionistic writing. Their writings are required reading for all free thinkers, making men feel unadventurous while awakening women to their potential as individuals. Translated by the brilliant novelist Paul Bowles, The Oblivion Seekers should sit on your bookshelf alongside the works of Burroughs and Camus. Obviously, Camus was Algerian, French Algerian, and Burroughs spent time in Tangier. So that's a little reading for my Agro Mystery Books for Men about Isabel Eberhardt. Um, as I say, The Oblivion Seekers translated by Paul Bowles. If you don't know who Paul Bowles is, um, but you should. Paul Bowles wrote um, his most famous novels, The Shattering Sky, which is made into a brilliant film by Bertolucci. We'll cover Bowles at another point. He wrote four novels, a lot of short stories. Um, American composer and writer who spent a lot of time um, in North Africa and Tangier. Um, really great stuff. And he translated Eberhardt and was a big fan. He was published by Peter Owen in hardback. So when I do a Peter Owen feature, I'll show you, I'll show you a bit of Bowles in, in Owen. Um, so as I say, seek her out. She's a really fantastic writer in the shadow of islam well worth a read and prisoner of dunes and as i say they're a mixture of short stories vignettes um personal reminiscences really hard to categorize a really beautiful pellucid writing um as i say on the nature of freedom and she really pushed the envelope um as well she was killed in a flash flood um i think she was 27 she was very young um so uh, you know an early member of the 27 club you might need to check it out online but she she really was um, way ahead of everybody else. And, you know, she was accepted by men in North Africa. She smoked keef with them. And I said that she dressed as a man. And, you know, she, she lived a, you know, a rather blissful life. I think, you know, you get a great bit of joy from from her writing, as well as um, these wonderful meditations on the empty spaces of, of the North African desert and um, a great figure. So Isabel Eberhardt, a wonderful neglected figure of outside literature. Um, you're more most likely to pick up Oblivion Seekers. Hardly anybody stocks these these days. They're just about still in print, as I say, some of them print on demand. Um, there was a TV programme made about her, it must be 20 years ago, um, fronted by Juliet Stevenson. I think it was shown on, on Channel 4. You can probably find it here on YouTube somewhere. Well worth checking out. And there have been Virago um, retrospectives of work, but the Owen ones are the real thing. So that's Outlaw Bookseller signing off for now. We may do a little bit later on and have a great day.